Hello, my name is Sune Lose. I work for Abakion as part of the Supply Chain Box community. In this video, I'm going to show you our add-on reverse planning, which is an add-on we have built to be able to find critical items to replenish on your inventory and how to be able to move demands if you cannot fulfill them. So in this introduction video, I'm going to show you what this means and how it relates to planning, how it relates to MRP if you want to run MRP. So the typical issues of using planning in NAV will be some of those. First of all, we have lack of overview, meaning it's difficult for us to see how an item evolves on the inventory, how the inventory profile looks, and how the items relate to each other on different levels in the low-level code. This means the inventory availability is difficult for us to see, and the, profile, sorry, the promised delivery dates on sales order and production orders is difficult to calculate because we don't know the specific orders all through NAV because we can't see them. It also, it's also a typical issue that we have to find out what to do next, meaning as a planner today, what do I have to do right now? What is most important, what is most urgent for us? And another thing is that order creation is time consuming. Even though we have the MRP journal, which for many people is very difficult to use, it's still time consuming to create and send orders. So many users of NAV are creating orders manually, purchase orders and production orders, and that requires a lot of time. Those that run MRP has other issues that is often a problem in NAV. First of all, the MRP planning worksheet or the requisition planning worksheet will create many lines per item per location, meaning lines for uh, new orders, lines for changing orders, uh, changing dates, and it could be many lines and those could be difficult to understand. It requires data maintenance on items, meaning you have to set up a lot of field on the item card to be able to run a full MRP, which can be complicated to maintain if you have many items. We also often meet the problem that it's difficult to understand the planning. Uh, the planning batch job is very complicated and it, when it creates cancellation and new orders, it's difficult for the users to understand what is actually happening. And therefore they call us and we use a lot of time to explain and it's still difficult also for us. Last of all, we have a high risk of setting up items wrong if we don't fill in the replenishment system or the reorder system. On the item card, nothing will happen in the MRP batch job and we just forget the item because it doesn't come in there. So that's a big problem as well. So why use reverse planning? First of all, we save time on planning because we made some issues of making this very quickly, thereby maximizing service level and also maximizing service level uh, to the fact that we can promise a delivery date on the sales order and actually be able to maintain or to, to keep this delivery date. We get an overview of critical items within lead time, meaning all items that are critical related to safety stock or zero within lead time is possible for us to identify. We can also use reverse planning to replenish item from a normal planning perspective, meaning reorder point. And it's a nice shortcut to run full MRP as we're going to show you in uh, those videos because we use the planning worksheet to carry out the orders. So if you want to run full MRP, reverse planning is a very nice tool to, to get there in an easy way. Last of all, it doesn't require any setup, so it runs out of the box. And if you don't set up anything, it uses zero as safety stock and you can run it immediately. So the two main features of reverse planning is to be able to find critical items, which is item that gets below safety stock within the lead time. So we want to identify as quickly as possible all the items that we have to react on right now. And the second issue, the second big feature is to be able to move demands, meaning moving sales demand, component demands or transfer order demands related to the dates that we can actually deliver those on. So let's dive into what that means. So first of all, critical items. We want to be able to identify critical items to replenish, meaning items that are specifically critical related to safety stock or zero or just item that we need to replenish, meaning there's a batch job that we could just look on reorder point that we want to replenish. It only creates one line per item per location, so it doesn't create several order suggestions. It just tells you this item has to be 
uh, handled somehow and you have to create orders for this item to replenish it. And there's a quick journal, which is a copy of the planning worksheet that carry out orders very quickly that we're going to show you. So when you determine an item that you need to replenish, it's very quickly to create new orders. Let's look a little into that. So first of all, we want to find critical item to replenish. So this could be an inventory profile in NAV. We have a reorder point, we have a safety stock, we have a lot of demands uh, on top, all the green uh, arrows up there. And we do have already three existing purchase orders uh, supply, which provide us with this inventory profile. And it's easy to see that in the end, we're going below safety stock and below zero, but the in inventory on the right-hand side it is actually positive. We just have some mismatch on the date. This, is, this could be an, an inventory profile in standard NAV. Now what the MRP planning job will do, it will suggest a lot of issues in here. It will suggest to cancel orders. It will suggest to move orders. This is actually a slide made from a production that we do on MRP planning, how the MRP planning could react, meaning it has a frozen zone. It has time buckets that we have to be aware of. It has trigger points uh, on both reorder points and in the frozen zone. We're supposed to be able to move or canceling orders and it creates create several lines in the planning worksheet that we have to understand. And to be able to understand it really, we need to be able to draw this line. So this is what the MRP would do. And all the red uh, issues, all the red uh, uh, lines here, displays what should actually be set up on items if you want to run the MRP. So you have to set up all these things on the item card. Some of them are Mandatory need to have fields, the replenishment system, the reorder policy, the lot accumulation period if you run lot for lot, the rescheduling period. Some of them are optional if you want to have order modifiers in there. You have to define lead times and reorder quantity. So all these fields has to be set up in NAV if you run MRP. So MRP is very complex. It's very cool when it works, but it's very complex to make uh, up and running. With the reverse planning, what we do is simply this. We measure on the first day that we will get below reorder point and put that in a line. So the first date below reorder point is one of the triggers we find. Another one is the first day below safety stock here on the right hand side. Then we find the lowest inventory in the period we're measuring on and we find the end inventory. And those four information goes into one line and the line will only occur if you run below safety stock or reorder point, the line will pop up and you can see you have to do something here. So basically it's a very nice tool just for providing those information. And based on this, we can create a new quick order using the planning journals. So the other big issue or the other big features of reverse planning is to be able to move demands, suggesting to move sales order demands, component demands and transfer demands. So it's possibly to actually calculate bottom-up instead of top-down that the replanning worksheet does to find out demands that we cannot fulfill and then suggest to move them. So we calculate from in low-level code from the purchase orders first and we calculate the consequences for not being able to have purchase orders on time up through the hierarchy through production orders up till sales orders. Let's take an example here. So this could be a hierarchy of item Starting with item number 1000 in the top, we have three sales demands on, uh, on the sales orders, which, which uh, the planning job would have created a production order, so there might already be a production order in there. And the production order will create a, another production order on the front wheel, item 1100, and it calculates down till the front hub here and to the axle front and socket front and back wheel. So this is a typical hierarchy of orders in NAV. Now the problem is if our purchase order, one of the purchase orders cannot be delivered on date. So in this case, we will delay it for one week because the vendor can't deliver. So what the MRP journal will suggest is just to move the purchase order back again because then the logic will be correctly correct. But the, uh, the problem for us is that the vendor already told us that he cannot deliver. So the purchase order actually is delayed. So what we need instead is to calculate bottom up to find out that we should actually move all those order, meaning we should move the sales order demands uh, related to all this consequence and we should move the related orders as well so we don't get item on stock too early. So this is the point of moving demands to actually be able to 
move all your orders and tell your customers when you can fulfill, fulfill the, the orders. So these are the videos we have in the reverse planning uh, suite. First of all, the introduction video is uh, this one. Then we have a video identifying critical items based on safety stock or zero if you haven't entered safety, safety stock. So this shows you how to find all the items that are critical within lead time. We have another, another video to, sh to find, show you how you find replenish item, meaning items that are not critical related to safety stock, but critical or, or just need to be fulfilled related to reorder point. There's a video to show how we create order quickly uh, with the quick journal, and there's a video to suggest order quantity based on different parameters. It still only make one line per location per item, but it could suggest quantity more intelligent than just filling it in. And there's a video to show how we move demands and how all the move functionality works that you can see. And then there are two setup video. First of, the first one is to set up in the NAV, how do you set up the reverse planning and make it work. And the last one is more for developers to find out how do you implement uh, reverse planning very quickly in your NAV database. So good luck on all the videos.